All right, recently I got this letter. I'll show you the overhead camera thing here. Um, and uh, I'm not going to cover up the address there. But uh, this letter really illustrates what I've been warning about in terms of Baptist mind control. And it goes on in everything. But, you know, a lot of people, they think you know, the Baptists are the ones that have it all together. And I'll grant you there are Baptists that are saved. I don't say that all Baptists are lost, obviously. I've had some great mentors in the Baptist system, but uh, I'll tell you what, there's some major problems. And a lot of the Baptists, there's this pride thing and this exaltation of the preacher to a very unhealthy level. And I'm going to show you that in this letter here. All right, so let's get right to it. Here we have my name, video address there, name and all that, to Brian Dunlinger. Since you do not have an email so that people can contact you quickly and easily, I am writing this letter to you. I can't remember when I wrote a letter last since we live in 2016 and people have email. You might want to look into that. It is very simple to do that, but I'm sure you know that since you are pretty good at making videos. Okay, now I understand with over a thousand videos, I can't expect everybody to see every single video. All right, um, but I have talked about why I don't have email in a previous video. If you have any questions about anything in terms of, uh, does Brian talk about the Sabbath day or the um, Mark of the Beast or whatever, just go to the search area at my channel and type in a keyword. Now, to the woman that wrote this, all you would have to do is just go type email and you would see my video where I get into detail why I do not have my email address public anymore. There are people that have it that I write back and forth with, but uh, there's a lot of people that don't. It's not just going to be available like it used to be because uh, it was just getting to the point of just being ridiculous, just so many emails a day, and it's like all I was doing was answering emails, and there's just no time to even you know, write sermons anymore. So that's already been discussed. So, uh, you know, but it starts out sarcastic, and which is fine. I don't mind that. But uh, here we go. Let's get into this thing. It says here, now I haven't seen a lot of your stuff, but I did see one video that I thought was really wrong, and I felt I needed to speak up. You're putting a series of these videos together, slamming my pastor, Dr. Roland Rasmussen, Rasmussen and it is wrong what you are doing and saying. Okay, stop for there for a minute. Um, she's in Wisconsin. I'm not going to give out the exact address, but she's in Wisconsin. Rasmussen's in California. So... You're going to see she was raised under this guy, but he's still her pastor. And this, this Baptist thing, they'll call the, the, the preacher, they'll call him pastor. And oftentimes they don't call, you know, and, and you read your King James Bible, never is the title pastor given as a religious title. It's always a description. Pastoring the flock, keeping watch over them. That's fine. But when you take it and you start to have religious titles, I mean, the only thing we should be calling each other is brother or sister. There are no religious titles. So it's very dangerous. But you have a lot of these Baptists, they'll get into this thing of pastor this, pastor that. And they aren't even saying Pastor Rasmussen, Pastor Roland. They'll just say pastor. And I've seen this thing. Now she's saying Pastor Rasmussen, but she's moved far away, a couple states away, but he's still her pastor. A little bit of man worship here, but it, it definitely gets a lot worse. You're going to see what I'm saying here. All right. She says, everyone has the right to say what they believe. This is what my pastor has done. He wrote a book under the direction of the Holy Spirit. This book right here. All right. Post Trib Research Center. I have the book and I've read most of it. All right. Uh, I haven't, I was going to go through the whole thing and whatever else. I made a series of videos just showing some of the ridiculous lies that this guy comes out with. And I have another video talking about the fact that this guy, Roland Rasmussen, is tied to some very interesting individuals. He was tied to Johnny Todd. Uh, he was Johnny Todd's pastor. Ken Hovind was converted to this weird anti-pre-trib rapture stuff by Rasmussen. Steven Anderson. Fred Springmeier. I, forget there was, I think there was a couple others. But the point is, Rasmussen's tied to some very interesting people. And I've gotten a couple times, his people have contacted me, and it is this brainwashed, don't you speak against Rasmussen, he he's just doesn't make mistakes, you know, he's just perfect. 
what's going on there. It's called mind control. Jack Hiles did it. Again, I get people from the Jack Hiles cult thing. How dare you speak against our pastor? Uh, you know, And all I did with the Jack Hiles study is I showed mostly their own videos that they put out where the, the young girl students are coming in there and they're singing, we love you preacher. Uh, oh yes, we do. There's, there's not, we don't love anyone as much as you. You would have people sing that, you know, and, and, you know, uh, Jack Hiles would take the young, young girls and he'd have special nights with them and stuff like this, all the young girls to his college there and no boys allowed and, and everything else, just him and these young girls. Some really, really, really weird stuff going on out there. But again, you, you say things about, you know, Jack Hiles and it's just, how dare you speak against our pastor? You better be careful. It's like, well, he's dead right now, and I don't believe he was a saved man. Some of the stuff that guy did and got away with, well, here on earth he got away with it. But uh, Rasmussen, he's got some very, very wicked stuff. And to say that he wrote a book under the direction of the Holy Spirit. Um, do you realize there, if you're watching this, um, do you realize that according to your pastor's uh, teachings here, you could actually lose your salvation. You go into the time of Jacob's trouble and take the mark, you'd lose your salvation. There, thereby making God a liar because God promised that you're sealed until the day of redemption with the Holy Spirit of promise. So he's making God out to be a liar, but the Holy Spirit directed this? You need to think about that. Now you can believe it or not, and you can express your opinions and quote scriptures all day long to prove your point, which is what I do. I obviously don't have a problem with that. Well, you maybe hey, listen. What I have a problem with is the things that you are you are saying about my pastor, like he is a liar and a hypocrite. He is not. Oh yes, he is. He is a scholar of the Bible. He has spent countless hours upon hours, probably longer than you have been alive, in the study of the Bible. All right. Again, let me just stop there for a minute. Um, somebody can study the Bible and still not come to the truth. It's the Holy Spirit that guides into all truth. All right. Uh, there are some Catholic monks and, st and things like that, that that probably have studied, studied and searched the scriptures for years and years and years, and they're not saved. All right? The Holy Spirit has to guide you into all truth. But let's continue. All he has ever wanted to do is serve the Lord with his whole heart and life. He is re now, he's retired now and in his late 80s, so you are a bit late in your rebuttal to his book. But oh well, that's not why I'm writing this. He has faithfully served God with his whole life. He began at Faith Baptist Church back in the early 60s and started Faith Baptist Schools, which has taught thousands of children and reached many families with the gospel of Christ. Now, I did a whole study on this right here. Uh, there's nowhere in Scripture, in the King James Bible, where it says that you're to teach other people's children. Okay, it's the responsibility of the parents to teach their own children. But that's another issue. When the church was very young, he spent much of his time going door-to-door -door in the West San Fernando Valley, inviting people to church and sharing the gospel. Okay, uh, inviting people to church, could you give me some scripture for that? Build the building and invite people to come into it. Could you give me some scripture? Could you give me chapter and verse in the King James Bible on that? Uh, no, you can't because it's not in there. He came to my house on one of those days and gave the gospel to my parents. My mom received Christ on one of his first visits, but my dad wasn't as receptive. He came back and came back and kept witnessing to my dad until he one day gave his heart and life to Christ. All right. Again, another thing I need to say this, and that is I've seen this thing, this Baptist high pressure salesman thing, and they will just hound people until the person finally is just like, you know what, I just got to do this just to get this person off my back. I actually knew a, a pastor, Guy Mosebrook, Liberty Baptist Church down in Ephrata, where I used to attend, and I would speak there occasionally and things. And he said that the first time he prayed the prayer of salvation, it was to get a bunch of Baptist door-to-door -door evangelists off of his back because they wouldn't take no for an answer. And he said, okay, yeah, all right, you know, I'll pray. What do I got to do? You know, and he prayed this prayer, and they left, and he was like, good, finally they're gone. And he wasn't saved, and he knew he wasn't saved. So this high-pressured thing, he just comes back and comes back and comes back. Very, very dangerous. We attended that church many years, and my parents served the Lord there for two for decades. If it weren't for our wonderful pastor and God's grace, I don't know where we would be. Our family, my sisters and I grew up there, got married there, and have all given our lives to the Lord to serve Him and still do today. Okay, um, are you going to serve Him in the time of Jacob's trouble? 
you know, he would say, call it the Great Tribulation. That's not even a Bible term, but apparently the Holy Spirit led him to do that, you know. Because um, uh, you're a pastor here, you're a faithful pastor, has you going into a time where you're going to be facing God's wrath. Isn't that weird? This is only one of many, many stories of how God used Roland Rasmussen to reach countless thousands for Christ. Don't Does this make him perfect, infallible? No. He is a human just like you and me. Remember this. But he is not a liar and a hypocrite. Yes, he is. You need to be careful of the things you say about people you do not even know. Okay, another thing, and, and you know, part of the reason I do these videos is to instruct you out there when you get this kind of stuff put on you, all right? Um, you have no right to judge somebody that you don't even personally know. Well, that's interesting because, you see, I judge Satan. I call him uh, wicked, and I can't wait to see him cast into the lake of fire for all of eternity. But yet, you know what? I've never sat down and had a meal with him. So, really, I have no right to judge Satan. Uh, no. <laughs> Roland Rasmussen put out a book in the public world out there, okay? This thing's public. Right, this isn't. I didn't sneak into his house someplace and steal his private notes or, or questions about. It. He put this thing out. I am a preacher. I have a right to critique the book, and I don't need to know him personally to do that. Again, this thing has been just perpetuated for so long. You know, well, you shouldn't judge them until you've contacted them personally. That's only working if it's somebody that you know that's come and attacked you, and there's a personal difference there. It's not somebody writing a book and me coming out and critiquing it. I don't have to go to him personally. It's ridiculous. You talked about people he was associated with over the years. Well, some of those people you, who you mentioned he has parted ways with because they were found to be frauds and have strayed from the truth. He is not perfect and neither are you. Okay? If your ministry is to attack people, you might want to... You might want to consider your ways. Attack the wrong, not good, godly people who did only uh, what God wanted them to. So God told him to write this book? I don't think so. You will be hard-pressed to find any dirt on him because there simply isn't any. He has done the right thing in his life and has served God faithfully his whole life. Uh-oh. You see, part of mind control, when you see somebody who's under mind control, they will have sort of a two-natured thing. They, they, one minute they're going, well, he's okay, he's not perfect. And the next, but he is perfect. You know, they're under mind control. See, up here, does this make him perfect and fallible? No. All right? He is not perfect. Down here, you will be hard-pressed to find any, any dirt on him because there simply isn't any. I thought you just said he wasn't perfect. He has done the right thing in his life and has served God faithfully his whole life. But he's not perfect. Up here, he is not perfect. But he's served God faithfully his whole life and there isn't any dirt on him. What do we have? Mind control. Somebody that's under mind control. Baptist mind control. I mean... I am not doing a thing wrong, brethren, according to Scripture. The Bible says if judgment comes, it must begin at the house of God. Part of my job is to judge the brethren and to judge myself as well. And I've had to come out and repent of things and say I was wrong about whatever. But I'm not wrong about Roland Rasmussen. I can guarantee you that. I mean, I've done so many studies on the thing of the rapture being before the time of Jacob's trouble. You know, people call it the pre-trib rapture. That's not really the biblical term, but the point is, uh, it's Bible doctrine. Total Bible doctrine. And for this guy to come out and attack it, uh, he's not right with God. Simple. So she says here, finishing up, so, so disagree with his viewpoint, sure, just don't slander a person and call them a heretic, liar, and hypocrite. He is not. Yes, he is. I do know that when his life here on earth is done, he will hear, Welcome home, my good and faithful servant. There are countless stories just like mine and thousands of people he's personally led to the Lord. You need to examine yourself and your motives behind what you say and how you say it. What happened to the children who spoke against God's servant? See, again, another favorite teaching of Bathlicks is they'll say, 
you know, don't speak against the man of God. Because, you know, they did that back there in the Old Testament. And the Lord sent a, a female bear and ate them and things like this. And that's one of the stories. I think it was Elijah. And, uh, you know, so you speak against the man of God, something's going to, you've got judgment coming down on your house. <laughs> well, what if he's wrong, you know? And I got that whole study in, in my uh, independent Baptist Catholicism thing. And there's a pastor named John Dorsey. And he's just screaming, you know, he's like a professional wrestler the way he talks. And just, you know, screaming and yelling and everything. And, and he says, you know, you say, well, well, he's wrong, you know, the man of God. And he goes, I don't care how wrong he is. You better keep your hands off the man of God. You understand what I'm saying? Another example of somebody who is under mind control of a charismatic preacher. This man here. Right there. And he will keep people under that control. You can use the Bible to control people. Absolutely. And what happens is, when you start to see a ministry where the man starts to put a little bit much emphasis on his own preaching, and he puts a little bit too much, uh, you know, he'll question the Bible, he'll say, you know, oh, I, I am definitely King James only. It's my most preferred version. But, you know, really, until you understand Greek and Hebrew, you can't really truly understand the, the true shades and nuances of what the Scriptures, what originally was intended to be said. So you see, you have to come to me. Because I'm a scholar. I'm a Bible scholar. You're laity. I've, tr I've been trained for this. You obviously are not trained. And that's what you get with this type of thing here. All right? Uh, you're not going to get that from this ministry. Uh, I'm not your final authority. I'm not to be worshipped. I'm not to be emulated to the point of, of thinking that I'm somehow perfect and infallible. You won't find any dirt on me. Um, you'll find dirt on me. Things I've messed up, things I've, I've done wrong. Um, <laughs> I'm not always very polished when I'm uh, preaching or teaching the Word of God. Uh, and I'm certainly not going to point to me and say, follow me. The Bible. This is your final authority. You say, what about Greek and Hebrew? Don't need them. Greek and Hebrew are fine for Greek and Hebrew speaking people. <laughs> but you see, the Lord gave us this book in English. And you're, you can read it. And the Holy Spirit can show you just as much as He can show me. So, you know, something like that's sad to me because I've seen it. I've seen this thing. I've been in Baptist churches for years and years and I've seen the man worship and things. And, and uh, It's a shame. It really is. Please don't get caught up in that. If you're in a Baptist church someplace, uh, you really need to think about that. Okay? That's going to be it. Thank you for watching.